Welcome to the Latin Wealth Podcast, a podcast dedicated to educating the Latino community about entrepreneurship, investing, and business. Yo, what's going on, Latin Wealth family? Welcome to another episode to Wealth Wednesday. And you guys already know, one of the best podcast shows out there when it comes to talking to you guys about relevant information and news going on in the world, hosted by two Latinos. And yeah, we're here to give you guys great information. We're here to give you guys wisdom um, and give you guys our perspective as well. Every single Wednesday, I've uh, been going for a while now. I don't even know what episode we're on and um, we're going to keep going right until uh, we reach the masses and, you know, we're definitely hitting some people. There's definitely been some opportunities coming up um, and we want to continue to roll with it and continue to give you guys that value. So if you guys have been a listener to Latin Wealth or Wealth Wednesday, do us a huge favor right now and support us. There's a couple of ways that you can support us. Number one, you can share this podcast episode with one other person that needs to hear this. What you can also do is you can leave a rating and review, something that we don't really ask too much. But if you can leave us a rating review on your preferred listening platform, go ahead and do that for us. I know it can be a, a little complicated, like, yo, how do I leave a rating review? Typically, if you're on Apple Podcasts, you just scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page until you hit the bottom and it's there. If you're on Spotify, it should be right there on your home page. But leave us a rating and review, and you know that would really mean the world to us. And with that being said, let's get into today's episode. We got some dope topics that we're going to talk about. And first and foremost, you guys already know, Jeremiah, how you feeling, bro? Feeling good, bro. Like you said, dope. Uh, dope actual topics to speak on. I feel like we're really going to get into it and bring a lot of value. We bring value every week. But sometimes, you know how you have them episodes when you're like, oh. This gun. This this, this yeah. is going to hit the way it needs to hit. This one's going to hit the way it needs to hit. So hopefully everybody's got their uh their notebooks and stuff and they're ready to get to it. A hundred percent notebooks and also bring an open mind as well. Something that I think is very important uh, for the things that we're about to discuss. And again, you guys already know Jeremiah and I. We text, you know, maybe a couple times a week. Yo, what are we going to speak on this week? And he hit me with something pretty dope that I want to hit on and. That is the question of why entrepreneurship? Why be an entrepreneur? Right. We we hear this word a lot. You know, it's kind of a, a it's been a buzzword the past couple of years. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. It's cool. It's sexy. You can be on a jet, a yacht. You know, that's that's what it appears to be, right? But what I think it's not spoken about a whole lot is kind of the 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 behind the scenes of an entrepreneur, right? The work that you really have to put in to get there, right? And if you are an entrepreneur yourself, you wanna, you know exactly what we're talking about. Um, so I say all that to say, uh, the question, the icebreaker question for us today is why entrepreneurship? Why? What, what are three reasons why we decided to jump into this? Um, Jeremiah, I would love to start with you. We can kind of just go back and forth with our, with our three reasons why. Okay, I'll give my first one. Um, and I think this is the one for everybody. This is going to be probably the top yeah. one. It's freedom and autonomy. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Yeah, freedom and autonomy, you know. Um, and the reason I say that, and, and what does that mean? Freedom what? Freedom to live my life how I choose to live it. Freedom to have my own schedule with the timing that I have for my own schedule. Freedom to spend time with my children, with my family, my significant other, as I so choose, right? Um, and then autonomy means that I don't have anyone that's, the authority over me. Um, in so many cases, whenever you have a corporate job, obviously you have a hierarchy. There's a boss, there's the supervisor, all this or whatever. Um, and so just to have that freedom in your schedule, freedom in your purpose, and in the autonomy of doing whatever it is that I want to do as it aligns to my goals in being an entrepreneur. That's my number one. That's my number one as well. Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You know what I'm saying? Like the freedom. So I'll say this. When, you know, I've always been the type that wanted to have full control over his life, right? And so when I got with my wife, one of the things that we spoke about very often is something that you spoke about is spending time with your kids. 
Mm. You know, I, oh, we always like dreamed about like, yo, we just want to like, if we want to take our kids out of school and take them to the park, take them to Disneyland or take them on a trip or whatever, you want to have that freedom and that option to do that. Not yeah. only that, but we want to have the freedom to be able to go to our kids sport sporting events and you know basketball events or whatever the the case is school plays we like we want to be there for our kids and i think that was super that is super important for my wife and i is to have that freedom and flexibility um to be there as much as possible you know i come from a, a mother at times she worked two jobs she worked a day job sometimes she worked um, a night job as well so there was times in our life where the time I spent with her was was limited because she was working, right? So, and this isn't like no shade or knock at all, but she was doing what she had to do to pr to make sure I had the opportunities I have today, which I'm always grateful for. And so with that opportunity, I want to make sure for the next generation that we have the freedom to be there for our kids and even have the freedom to like bring my mom with us to grandkids games and whatnot yeah. and, and plays and trips and whatnot so i agree with you man freedom is, is number one as well for me um and obviously i mean we were talking about you were saying being able to bring your mom you want to place yourself in a position to where your mother doesn't have to work anymore right it's one big thing people always talking about different type of flexes right for me one of the most significant flexes you could ever do is to make sure your parents never have to work again when you get to a certain point to retire your parents or, you know, if it was your grandparents or whoever it was, you know, that that person that raised you and stuff like that, then making sure that they don't have to be out there working that job. You take care of them. Right. And you could never pay them back, of course, especially if it's your mother. Right. Because she brought you in this world. But you want to show your appreciation and you want to make sure that they know that, hey, no, I got us. You're good. Right. So that, that's that's big. Um, my number two, innovation and creativity. Now, what do I mean by this? Hmm. But number two is innovation create and creativity because a lot of us have passions, right? A lot of us have so many things that we have inside and different gifts and talents that we've been blessed with, but we're not able to cultivate that because we have to work in a nine to five, which has this very strict mandate or you're categorized, right? You're placed in a certain box for that position. Whereas you have limitless talents and limitless possibilities of things that you would want to do or you might even be at the job and you see certain things occurring and you know ways to fix that. But just based upon your position, you're not able to give that input on how to change those things and better the company, right? So when you're in an entrepreneur, the innovation and creativity that you have inside yourself, you're able to cultivate that, build upon it, and it actually tends to lead you in a place to where you're separated, right? And that's a good separation. Let's say that just for example, you're in a you're a person that that sells socks, right? Athletic socks. Everybody sells socks. You can go anywhere to get some socks. But your innovation and creativity says that you place certain different type of symbols of, of local high schools, and you're able to draw that or actually knit them in there, right? And these different things. And that separates you from everyone else that sells socks. I'm just giving a real simple example. Mm -hmm. There's obviously in anything that you do, but being able to do that and having the freedom and autonomy, right, to actually to be able to do that, to create and be innovative that's my number two man my number two is actually very similar i thought we were gonna like separate ways go our separate ways in this one but i literally put untapped potential I love entrepreneurship it. so I love pretty much piggybacking off of what you just said like the ability to like the way i think of it from a creative aspect like whatever that you want to do you can do that with entrepreneurship right and i think sometimes when we spend a lot of time at a, at a nine to five, we kind of get bogged down to that title of that nine mm -hmm. to five, right? So whatever that is, if it's a marketing coordinator or marketing, whatever, marketing director, that's your title, but that's not who you are. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that you're interested in outside of that title that you would love to get your hands in, right? So me, I look at myself like, man, I'm into clothes, I'm into you know music, all types of things, sports. Maybe down the line, there's an opportunity where like that's something I want to jump into. So, and I believe entrepreneurship gives you that ability to do that. One person, it as you're talking, that comes to mind, I think of someone like a Kanye West, right? Mm -hmm. Let's not talk about like the political or, you know, some of the things he says, but if you look at him as an artist, 
whatever the heck he yeah. wants to do, he does it. Whether yeah. it's music, whether it's a gospel album, whether it's a, a, a whatever album, or if it's clothes, or maybe documentaries. Like to me, that's the epitome of someone that is like tapping into their full potential, right? And when you look at him, he's he's not just doing it. He's trying to do it at the highest level, whatever mm -hmm. he's doing. So uh, that's my number two, very similar to you, is that untapped potential, whatever it is that I want to do, if I'm interested in it and I really want to dive into it, I believe I can do it. I love that. And I think that was a perfect example um, with Kanye. Like we said, outside of the political and all that extra stuff, I think that was an excellent example. Um, I will say I missed the old Kanye, though. But Man. obviously people, we were talking about Jay. Jay said people say they missed the old Jay. Yeah. You know, so so I, I I get it. I get it. Everyone matures. Go I was going to say quick, quick, quick side note, not to get off track. You know, it, it's funny when it comes to music. I, we're going to get back on track right now. But do we miss the old Kanye, the old Jay-Z, or do we miss the moments that we were listening to, where we were at when we were listening to that old Kanye, old Jay-Z? You know what I'm saying? Um, I'll, I'll say sense? for me. Yeah, it does. I'll say for me personally, it was just him. The old okay, him, because at that at that time of listening to that, I was I was in peril. I was living a whole fair. different type of lifestyle. <laughs> but, but for sure, I miss the old old him. Um, I don't miss the old Jay Z because I was super young, right? This is like early nineties or whatever. But like, um, I get why people say that or whatever. But I also understand the evolution of a person and the things that happen in life. You and I were just talking about that. The things that occur during life that tend to lean people towards the way that they are based upon experiences. So I understand Kanye. I get a lot of the decisions and things that he does or whatever is based upon his experiences. So I get that. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that. That's a good 100%. question. Yeah. What's your number three, bro? Uh, my number three is high earning potential. Mm. Now, I saved money for the last part because... In my mind, now, I'm not telling everybody this is the order that you have to put this in. But for me, money is the last thing. And I'm and people are like, but you're in finances. Yes, but purpose is more important than money to me, right? So here's the thing. In your job, your job has a set salary, right? Or you are doing a um, hourly, whatever hourly rate, whatever it is, you work more hours, you do overtime, and then you get paid more money, right? But for the most part, people that are start to break, you get you have a salary. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you do, you're going to be paid that salary, you might get a bonus, depending upon your performance or not, right? But it's a salary. Here's the thing. In entrepreneurship, you're not guaranteed that you're a lot of the hard work because in a lot of cases, you have to put in more hard work than you would at a job, right? Because you're sure. building the foundation versus working at a place that it was already built via a family or whatever, right? But here's the, here's the thing. On the back end of your entrepreneurial efforts, if you stick with it, right, and you work hard and you hone in on what it is you need to do on the back end of it, it's way more rewarding in most mm -hmm. cases. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. In most cases. In most cases, the earning potential is going to be extremely higher. Why is that? Because the money's coming to you. You're the business. It's dictated to you. Quick story. I sat before um, before I retired, before I went straight finances, right, in my own business, I was a chemical process engineer. Hmm. And I sat one day and I was sitting there and I was like, hmm. And I calculated how much money I was making that company daily versus what they paid me. And when I sat and I thought about that amount, I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. So I directly tied that to my entrepreneurial efforts now, because although I may put in more time on some weeks than I would have if I was working that job, the actual overall reward from it is higher financially, right? I get paid that. And the purpose driven side of it is as well, because I'm able to make a deeper impact in different people's lives, whether it be my clients or it's the, uh, you know, the advisors that we have the opportunity to partner with. And so that was my number three. I love that example because if, you know, a lot of us can look at our, our jobs or where we're at, you know, if we really think about like, yo, how much money am I making this company or how much yeah. time am I saving the CEO or this owner? It, it's absolutely absurd. It, it's absurd, right? So uh, I love that you that you brought that up. That's it's interesting. Uh, but for me, number three, 
very similar to yours. I wrote down, it's simply a necessity for me. It's a necessity, right? So when I think of the things that I want to do, I just spoke about like the different creative aspects and whatnot. I'm not sure if a job is going to allow me to do that, right? Yeah. You think about financially where I want to be. I'm a strong believer that I don't believe a job can pay you what you think you're worth. I've always believed that, right? And I, I think well, you can think, well, these NBA players, they're technically, they have jobs and whatnot, but some, a lot of these guys still want to get paid more. <laughs> like, I mean, but that's that's relative, right? Because really, to be honest, the company, right, the, the team or the company, which is the team, is making billions of dollars and they're paying them just a fraction of that. That's what I'm saying. So they probably think like, yo, you're still not paying me what I'm worth, right? Correct. So that, that's, that's my point. Like, I, I don't think a job can pay you what you think you're worth, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I just just at a granular level, like I like I said, I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to take my my parents places. I want to take my nieces and nephew places. I want to be able to set them up financially for whatever they want to do in their life. So, um, to me, the the answer to all of these problems is okay. That's great that you want to do that. It's great that you want to give back and help people and start businesses. Um, for you to do that, you're going to have to jump into entrepreneurship, right? This is going to be the answer. This is going to be the key. Um, not just jumping into entrepreneurship, but also having like a profitable business, right? Um, cause I think that's something else that we can probably talk about another time is people can jump into entrepreneurship, but they're not making no money or maybe they're working 20 hours a day driving themselves crazy when they could be working maybe eight we're making more money you know so that that's probably a different conversation for a different day but uh that's for me that those are the three for me freedom untapped potential and it's just simply a necessity for the things that i want to do for the person that i want to be and the flexibility that i want um entrepreneurship i believe is the vehicle for me now what i do want to preference i probably should have said in the beginning but we're not telling you to quit your job we're not telling you that entrepreneurship no. is for everybody, right? Um, this, it may not be for you, right? But one thing that we do speak about a lot on this podcast is entrepreneurship may not be for everybody, in my opinion, uh, but financial freedom is. Okay. Right? You can take control of your finances and you could, you can live a, a financially independent life if um, you take the proper steps. For sure. I think that taking the proper steps and then also I'll say that um, if you are planning to get into entrepreneurship, right, or an, an entrepreneurial endeavors, a hybrid model is the best approach. 100%. And they're like, what does that mean? What that means is keep working your job. Your job is the basis, right? Learn to invest what you're earning in your job into your entrepreneurial efforts. So instead of the money that you would go out and waste on bottles or however, or even the money on Jays and Fendi and all that... Put that money towards your business, pour into yourself because investing in yourself is going to be the greatest investment you could ever pour into. And that means seminars, books, whatever it is, that's going to help you to improve your service or what, or your product or what you're doing. Pour that into that, but keep working. I did it. I'm, I'm not telling you to do anything that I didn't do. I would work 60 to 80 hours as a chemical process engineer, and I would still work on building my financial uh, brokerage. Right. And so I was doing both of them until I got to the point to where, OK, yeah, we've crossed that threshold. Now I can move over here and we're only focused in on my business. But for the minute, I utilized that nine to five, let it help me build up, invest right. And then we moved over into another space. So I would say a hybrid, a, a hybrid mo uh, model is, is great for if you're trying to do this. 100 percent. I love that because I think personally, one of the best investing advice, you know, I learned at a, at a young age is, and this is controversial for some people, but they said never spend first generation money. Or if you want to be textbook savvy, never spend earned income, right? Mm -hmm. You always want to spend, you want to take that earned passive. income and you want to invest it, right? Yep. You spend the passive money. Yep. Correct. So yep. that second generation income basically is, is that, passive income right mm -hmm. so that's something i've learned and from the individual i learned it from he was like yo i don't even touch second third fourth i'm touching like money yeah. that my money that's my money made for me my fifth yeah. generation money right so hopefully that made sense 
Uh, but that's also something to think about. I know it's tough. Like, what you mean? I, I work so hard. I work 40 hours for this money. I can't get me some Fendi. Like Jeremiah said, hybrid mon model is, is, you know, is critical, right? Whether you're building a business or you're building your, yourself up financially. 100%. Two different types of hard, um, you know, in your lifetime. I always say there's a two type of hard. The hard now could be you're sacrificing for three to five years and you establish yourself with savings and do the things you need to do. Right. And that's a sacrifice. Or you, we could deal with the hard of 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 regret, you know, in 15 mm -hmm. to 20 years down the road when you have to keep working to your 80, 85 because you didn't make those sacrifices. So there's two different types of hard. And in order to get that financial freedom, you're going to have to pick one of them. Hopefully you pick the first one. So for sure. Speaking of finances. Yes, we got a we got a, a huge week mm -hmm. ahead. Meta, yep. Google, yep. Amazon, yep. Microsoft, yep, are all highlighting their earnings this week, and this is something that Jeremiah's been wanting to talk about, um, and he's definitely excited about. We're all excited about it. I'm also interested to see what's going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. We spoke about what earnings is on a previous episode. I don't remember the exact episode. Um, I'll link it in the description of this podcast. So if you don't know what earnings weeks is, we spoke about it on a previous episode. I would highly, highly recommend you check out that one, come back to this one or finish this one, go back to that and it'll all makes sense. Or just look up what earnings weeks is. Uh, but basically the week ahead will provide a look at metrics closely watched by the feds and what they're closely watching is economic growth and inflation. Um, Yeah. Talk to us, Jeremiah. Like I know you texted me. You said this is, you know, big tech. Big tech takes the center stage at a, a a critical time for as market rising bond yields and the fear of further Fed tightenings yeah. have set. You know, a lot of these stocks a lot lower in recent weeks. Yeah. Um, talk to us, man. Like why why is this like such a pivotal week? Why is it a big week for us? So one of the biggest reasons why is. You know, the majority of the seven stock that are basically holding up the world right now are revealing their earnings. Well, what does that reveal for you? Um, and this is something that I actually find is pretty interesting. You can almost link the actual uh, fiscal or financial health of the United States to the sale of the iPhone. Mm. Right. And with the iPhone being the majority of Apple's re revenue generation. Right. Then you tie that to how America's doing. What do you mean by that? What I mean by that is if I go in my earnings and we're not earning very much because the iPhone didn't sell very well. And, you know, during this quarter, we revealed that, you know, the iPhone we'd have to. And we're actually going to have to wait until the end of the fourth quarter for Apple to see mm -hmm. how that worked because they just came out with it. But what I'm saying is, is these companies are linked directly to industries and to sectors that directly are telling us how America's doing. And so if you look at what they say and how they're doing, that's why the Fed is watching it, because they're saying if spending is still doing very well, Microsoft, Apple, right, Visa, which is credit cards. If you see that, that they just have outrageous revenue, right, and they've just grown tremendously, the Fed says, oh, we got to keep raising rates. You people still got money out here that you're just frivolously, recklessly spending. So we got to tighten things up a little bit more because what they're actually trying to do is base the uh, base our economy, right? Slow that economy down. So that way we can have this landing or have this bubble burst that everybody's talking about um, and get to where they can start lowering rates again. And so I think that it's very important that we watch what Microsoft is doing because they're heavy in the software side of things. ChatGPT as well, they own like half of that. So you're looking at the non-essential right? Pieces of our economy, which is tech. Not saying tech's not essential. I'm just saying it's not commodities, right? It's not food. Sure. It's not, uh, you know, energy. It's not right. It's not those things. And so these things are the non-essential, but they're essential to our economy because they're telling us where the money's at. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I mean, for me, sitting and looking at the major, the number one company in the world, and then the number three company in the world and seeing where they where they kind of stacked up that's telling you either things to come down the road like they're foreshadowing what's coming in our economy or it's telling you that we're doing okay 
And I think the biggest problem that we've had in 2023 is that these earnings have continued to go up. A lot of that has to do with us printing uh, an immense amount of money in 2021. And so that created the inflation. So people are still spending off the money they got from, you know, during the pandemic. And that's a big part of our issue. A hundred percent. And let me ask you two questions. I'm curious for what you've been researching and what you've been, you know, looking at, how would you measure the health of our economy going into 2024? Um, so I think there's a false sense of confidence. And if you simply read, depending upon where you come from, people will tell you various different things, but the economy isn't doing well. Um, and what I mean by that is we're at a higher inflated rate than we were previous to the fall in 2008. Um, you know, our numbers are just, they were kind of like matching each other and then we just kind of shot past. We talked about a couple of episodes back with the, you know, the credit and where we're at on that, right? the debt balance of America and how we just shot past the tree. And like, we're literally, it's just craziness that's Out going on all across the board. Um, houses as well. I mean, it's not even a huge supply of homes in the market. You have it where the rates are extremely high and the cost of the homes are high. Mm. Like we're not in a, it's, it's just not a great state right now. I've been looking at CPI index. I've been looking at the cost of homes. We've been looking at futures and stocks like across the board. You're just seeing the remnants, the bond, the 10 year bond yields just shot up like crazy. That's telling you that more people are believing in sure money because something's coming. And so you have to just sit and analyze those things. Right. And how it all plays out. And this week's earnings fall. Right. They'll see how that aligns to everything that we've been seeing. So let me ask you, I think I've asked you this before, but do you, and I'm not asking you this because you're way older than me. You're only a couple of years older, but do you remember, I'm asking you because you've been in finance for so long. Like you yeah. spoke about your story when you were young, you were, um, you know, in finance for a while. So I'm curious, do you remember a time where inflation was this out of control? No. Um, I think they said, I remember they, they shot me, they shot something and they said, uh, you know, 1980 was the last time numbers were like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in 2000, you had rates higher than this for homes for 30 year fix, right? But the cost of the home was significantly lower. Right. And so you were taking that higher rate, but it was of a much lower principle, right? So I've never seen, I've, I've never seen stuff the way that it is. Inflation, cost of things I've, I've never seen it i've never seen a dollar as weak as it is hmm. and so it's interesting because there's people out there that and i think maybe we spoke about this last week we don't have to dive too into it but speaking about real estate you know um you got folks out there that are like when's the best time to buy and they're like it it's always a good time to buy real estate right because it's only no, going to continue to go up no it's that's not. what you hear a lot of people say though no it's not and, I, and I'm going to have to disagree with somebody that I actually, um, I love watching his channel. I love watching it. I was watching MG and they were yeah, talking. No, that's anyway, Yeah, I know. Shout out to MG. Shout out to MG. Shout out to MG. I've said, I, bro, I'm a follower. I've like, I've talked to Matt. Like we, it's, but I have to disagree. And I know he's been in the industry 20 years, but I have to disagree. There's no way, um, the cost of the home is higher, right? And you're looking at cities where over 80% of the homes sold are going higher than than the than the you know than the listing price. There's no way that that's a buyer. There's no way that's good for a buyer, right? And then you're paying highly qualified people are paying 6.75 to 8.2% on interest. Just in 2021, we're at 2.9. Like, there's, a, you can't tell me this is a good market to purchase real estate in. And they're like, well, yeah, it's always good because it's just going to keep, well, nah, I have to disagree with that. Even if you're investing or developing real estate. Now, if you're talking about some land and like within the next two or three years, you know, the city planning or something, and you know that that land is going to appreciate, right? Or the development of that land is going to pay you 5, 10 X. That's different. But a home, a residential, even even uh, multifamily, like I'm, I've been looking. And people are like, where do you get your information from? I mean, my mom was a real estate broker. 
in her, I mean, this is where I learned the game from. I said, and I watched and she, she was a CPA too. So I learned taxes and I'm sitting there and I'm like, mm, I get it. And that sounds like something that you would say when you're in the real estate um, industry. But to be honest, I, I don't see it. And I don't know, Chris, what do you think? Cause I, I just, I don't see, it. I don't see how that could be good for people purchasing. That's no, I, I agree. I think the, the interest rates are way too high. It just doesn't make sense. And like you said, um, you said early on in the 2000s, interest rates may have been high, but the, the housing prices it's were low. super low. But yeah. nowadays, they're both high. The average home cost back then was was like $87,000. Like right now, the average home cost is $114,000. It shipped it up $20,000. So that additional $20,000 times a, a higher or equal interest rate means hundreds of thousands of dollars more you're going to be paying in interest. I don't understand how that could... That doesn't seem beneficial to me. Um, people say that's on the deal. Yeah. yeah. You know, Let me but, ask you one more question before we get out of here. Um, are we due for a correction or are we in the midst of a correction? We're due for a correction. It hasn't fully hit yet. They're trying to do a soft landing. Um, because, I mean, compared to 2020. Yeah. yeah. Mm, no. People say, yeah, they say you're in the midst of one, but I can't. If we are, we're like at the very beginning of it. We're due for, but we're due market, um, housing market, right across the board. I think we're going to see mid 24, like mm -hmm. July, July, August 24. I think things are going to be way different. I think money's going to run out. I think we're going to start to see some things get real weird. People are already defaulting on car loans, mm -hmm. record rate. It's already it starting. It we're not is. there yet. But yeah, I was in a, not to cut you off. It's interesting because I do feel like we're in this gray area where like mm -hmm. just one thing can happen and we just go left or right. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we'd go the other way. Um, I can see true. how we'll go one way, but I don't know You're how right. we'll go back. To, I You're mean, right on that. You're right. Uh, hey, every things are going to be very it, it'll be very funny. You'll see a lot of things revealed uh, in November of 2024. Remember, we're in election season right now, right? And mm -hmm. and what you would see if that happened right before the election, you would see a revolution in America. I don't think you'd see people voting either way. I think it'd be something monumental. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they're ready for that. So we're going to keep you moving along, right, until election is over with. And then things can go and do whatever it is that they want to go. But you'll see the remnants of it starting in like July, like in primary season, July, August of 2024, you'll really start to see it happen. Yeah, 100%. Speaking about presidential election, um, Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, mm -hmm. um, student loans, they're back. So I'm sure you guys have gotten them emails. <laughs> it's, it's, I say that it, with, with all due respect, I'm not like, making fun of folks i got that email as well so just make sure you on top of that just a quick reminder um yeah do what you gotta do to get that handled that's all i'll say we we've spoken about that many times multiple times if you have questions about student loans and what to do check out just type in student loan under latin wealth and it'll come up or of course do your own due diligence um but with that being said i told you guys we're going to come with the information the show um, come with the value. If you enjoyed this episode, do us a huge favor. Share this podcast episode with one other person that needs to hear this. Before we go, Jeremiah, did you have anything else? I didn't even get give you the chance. You got last any last words? No, man. I would just tell everybody, make sure that we always talk about this as well. Do your due diligence. Um, and if you and if you need someone, I don't do this. And this is not trying to be shameless or nothing, but if you need to actually sit down and have conversations about the stuff that we talk about reach out to us like yeah we're here to help don't just think oh i just watched the show and they didn't not like no we actually would love to help you chris myself either or right yeah. it depends on what it is we can go either way but we'll make sure to help you out i'm not charging you nothing like people i re I'm, we're really here to make sure that our community is getting this information that you guys fully understand because i want to help you learn how to do due do, do, do diligence it's very important um we've had an episode where we talked about some other stuff that's going on too that that is that is crazy right now but um due diligence is really important guys please please make sure that you're checking into stuff and that you're reading and, and researching and everything don't like please that's that's the last thing i'll say I'll leave it at that and I'm, I'm gonna say this too real quick 
um, definitely take us up on that offer because we're going to, our goal, we're, we don't, we're not doing this to remain where we're at, right? We want to continue to grow and build a bigger community, right? So if you have access to a, some, someone like a Jeremiah or with me for anything that you guys need, take advantage of that because it's going to be a time where it's going to be, I'm not going to say impossible, but it's going to be a lot harder. It's going to be a bigger community. Yep. Hopefully with that bigger community, we can at least connect you with some other people. And I say that in like the most humble way possible, but yep. you know how that, how it works when people platforms get bigger or whatnot, harder to reach folks. But for you to say that, you know, shout out to you because definitely reach out to us if you have any questions. And with that being said, it's the Latin West family. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace. Yep.